before, and uh, Brother Stephen, if you were, I want to give him this guy and this guy for the time, and uh, they're going to sing something for you, and uh, you pray for them, and uh, we'll see what the Lord's got. All right. Amen. Amen. Listen, please keep me, please be praying. Uh, it's revival week. Oh, yeah. There is a real devil. I promise you. If it's going to fall apart, if it's going to tear up, it'll be the next few days yeah. as we head into a revival. And so please pray and uh, ask the Lord to grant the victory. All right? Yeah. Amen. All right.
same thing. Amen. 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 That's the truth. There's never a time. Amen. You'll never find a time when he wasn't all those things. Amen. And uh, I sure appreciate the good God of heaven being who he is. Amen. And uh, I'm grateful and thankful. Amen. I sure do love him this morning. Amen. I've been pondering, been thinking, been praying, and been asking the Lord uh, about revival. It's been a long time uh, praying, asking God to send real, genuine Amen. revival. Amen. I don't want to have just another revival meeting. I don't want to go through the motions or the routine. I really want to see God show up. In this I'd like to see God blow through here every single service. I'd like to see God show up in, in such a big way on Friday night that folks under the power of God just get gloriously burst into the family of God. And when we leave here, we just have to shake our head and say, that was the Lord. Yeah. And, uh, there's no human instrument, just the Lord. Uh, and so I've been praying a long time uh, that God would send real, genuine, Holy Ghost, heaven sent revival. You realize the day and hour in which you and I live, it's revival for survival. We're seeing things come to pass in our country and seeing things being done the only cure for that, can I be honest, it ain't another election. Right. The only yes. cure for that is ain't another politician. Right. Uh, dear God, that's what God said in the mess we're in now, right. is politicians. Mm -hmm. uh, the cure for that, the only cure for that, is revival. Amen. Lester Roloff said it this way, what's going on in our country is because of what's not going on in our churches. Amen. So goes the church, so goes the nation. Yeah. And tonight, or today, we need revival. Amen. Real, genuine, Holy That's Ghost, right. yeah. heaven sent revival. We don't need a high powered singing group. Yeah. We don't need some uh, fancy evangelist. We need God. Yeah. Yeah. We need anything else. We just need God. And I appreciate the sweet spirit of God coming by this morning yeah. and let me feel a little something. I appreciate yeah. that. Uh, but hear me, uh, what God does today uh, will not be sufficient for this coming day. And uh, so, this morning, uh, I want to try to deal with the subject of revival. And uh, I want to use a very, very, very familiar passage of Scripture. And want to give you a simple thought uh, from that passage as the Lord has nudged our heart this morning. And uh, so much so, I just jotted down two or three things I wanted to say. Uh, this time I didn't write them on my hand. Uh, this time I didn't write them on my hand. I, I broke my microphone, but I didn't write them on my hand. And uh, I jotted down two or three things I want to say. And I uh, want to be a help and a blessing to you. Uh, this morning I would like for all of us uh, to focus uh, the next several days on revival. Uh, the devil's going to throw every distraction he can at you. And he's going to do everything that he can to try to hinder you. Uh, and he, uh, again, he's going to, uh, but again, I, I'm, uh, if the devil doesn't fight, it worries me. We right. don't have much of a meeting right. if the devil don't fight it. Yeah. And uh, so, uh, but I would like for us, in spite of the difficulties and problems that will come our way the next few days, I'd like for us to, to, to uh, keep our minds and our hearts and our attention drawn to revival. And uh, so this morning, Second Chronicles chapter number 7, please, Second Chronicles. Chapter number seven, and uh, we'll try to give you uh, what the Lord has given us, and try to be a help and a blessing. Second Chronicles, chapter number seven, and we will read one verse of scripture for time's sake. I know we sung the choir this morning, and uh, we normally don't do that on Sunday morning. I appreciate them responding like they did, like they did. Uh, it's, sometimes it's a little tough being caught off guard, and uh, but I appreciate uh, our choir. And uh, so this morning, Second Chronicles chapter number seven. Look at verse number fourteen. Second Chronicles seven and verse number fourteen. The Bible says this: that the Lord is speaking. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin 
and we'll hear the and we'll heal their land. Let's pray. Father, we sure are grateful to be in the house of God this morning. We're thankful for the wonderful singing uh, that our ears have heard. We're thankful for the sweet spirit that our hearts have felt. Lord, our prayer is this morning you would capture our imagination, our attention, our hearts, and our minds. Lord, and you would help us to focus upon thee uh, and the meeting that is coming up. Lord, may you do an eternal work this morning. May you touch the unprofitable servant. May you anoint us and do us and power us. Give us that which we so need uh, to preach the word of God. We pray you put the words in our mouth. God, pray you give us unction, liberty, and power, clarity of mind and speech to speak those words. May you help us this morning. And Lord, may you deal with our hearts about revival. And Father, we'll thank you. We'll praise you. Whatever you do, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. As I said just a moment ago, revival is essential for the church. There's times when every church must be revived. Uh, a church that does not experience revival, uh, at least occasionally, will become a dead, dried up church. And the same is true for the Christian. There are times when every Christian must experience revival. Right. We live in a world that will suck the spirituality out of you. Uh, listen, you go out of here this morning and you say, boy, the Lord help me and encourage me. It don't take long being out there for the world to knock that spirituality out of you. May I be honest? All you got to do is try to drive to Hilton Head this afternoon. <laughs> that traffic is enough to make you less than spiritual. Yeah. I'm just saying, brother, uh, it don't take much for us to lose our spirituality. And so there are times when every Christian, their spirituality gets low. I don't care how spiritual you are, nobody stays way up here all the time. There are times of deep discouragement and times of struggle and times of battles and burdens and so forth. And what happens is our batteries get low. Right. And so what we have to do is we have to get with the Lord and uh, walk with the Lord and stay in tune with the Lord so that the Lord can recharge our batteries. Yeah. Can I put it this way? That's what revival really is. Yeah. Right. It is God coming by and recharging our batteries. And we fall in love with Jesus all over yeah. again. Amen. It is so easy to get distracted by of the battle, the burden, paying the bills, raising your kids. And it is so easy to become hard-hearted in a sin-sick world that you just kind of fall out of love with Jesus. You say, preacher, surely uh, our church wouldn't fall out of love with, Je with Jesus. Well, if you read about the, the, the church, uh, in those seven churches mentioned in the book of Revelation, this is what he said. Thou hast left thy first love. That's what he tells the church at Ephesus. Uh, the church, church at Ephesus was doing right. They were living right. They were gathering. Right. They were faithful. They were serving. The only problem was their heart wasn't in love with Jesus right. anymore. Amen. And listen, I understand there's times when we do what we do out of responsibility mm -hmm. and out of obligation. But hear me this morning. You can't live in that place right. where you just do what right. you do because you're supposed to do it. Right. Right. In the power of the flesh. And so there's times when we're all going to need to recharge. Right. And that's what revival is. God puts us on the charger. We fall head over heels in love with Jesus again. Amen. We become extremely sensitive to the Spirit of God. We, we become focused on the things of God again. And we become uh, in tune with the Lord once again. That's what real revival is. Yeah. Listen this morning. Revival is not for lost people. Revival for saved people. Amen. Now I'm glad when revival breaks out, lost people will get saved. That's wonderful. But really, uh, revival is for saved people. Amen. Now this morning, when you look at this text, you will see at the very beginning in verse number 14, he says this, If my people, which are called by my name, you will find that this, you said, preacher, that Second Chronicles, that is an Old Testament reference. You're exactly, precisely right. right. That is dispensationally, this is written to a Jew under the law. This has absolutely nothing to do with a New Testament Christian. Right. Doctrinally. But practically, you will find a principle here that will apply to any dispensation, right. to any uh, child of God. 
And so, yes, I understand dispensationally and doctrinally it's written to a Jew. But practically speaking, God reveals his heart about revival. God reveals some things to us about revival and God's desire to send revival. Right. Even though he's talking to Israel, we can apply it to us practically because it's not just doctrinal. It is a principle mentioned that we can learn from this principle and apply it to our life. Right. Hear me this morning. God wants to send revival. Right. It is not God's will that we walk around dead and defeated and right. discouraged. Right. God wants us to have victory. He wants us to have joy. He yes. wants us to be on fire. Right. He wants us to be excited. He wants the church to bless, to bless the church. Right. He wants the church to grow. He wants the church to bloom. And God is interested in sending revival to his people. And so you'll find he addresses this text to his people. Hear me this morning. I ain't preaching to the crowd out there. I'm preaching to the crowd in here this morning. God says he, if his people, which are called by his name, would do some things, God would respond in kind and he would do some things. You will find it is a lot like a recipe. God says if my people do this, this, and this, then the result is I'll do this, this, and this. And so this morning, when you study this text, you will find that God asks three things of his people. Three. You said preach a revival, you've got to do 47 things. Not according to this text. According to this text, there's only three things that are necessary. Right. Can I give them to you this morning? Look at the text in verse 14. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves, there's number one. Humility is essential for revival. Amen. Can I say this? If we are satisfied or we are proud of where we are, then God can do nothing for us. Right. But if we'll humble ourselves and admit we are not everything we should be, we are not as close to the Lord as we should be, we're not as spiritual as we should be, we don't read our Bible as consistently as we should. Right. Uh, we don't uh, pray as consistently as we should. And we are not as close to the Lord as we used to be. Uh, listen, it begins with humility. You will find that God always, 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 always honors humility in His people. Hear me this morning. Who walk around saying, look, I don't need revival. I'm in good shape. I read my Bible. I prayed. I had it out of gospel track. I've done right this week. Well, I don't need revival. But then guess what? You personally will never experience revival as long as you have that attitude. Can I be honest this morning? I am a poor and needy creature. I need the Lord. I need God's power, God's presence in my life. I need to be closer. I want to do more. I want to have my heart more uh, tender toward the things of God. I want to stay more focused on God. I want to uh, to be sensitive to the Spirit of God, the more so than I am now. Hear me this morning. I, I you say, which aren't you close to the Lord? I am, but I ain't as close as I want to be, or as I should be. And so this morning, it begins with humility, by humbling ourselves and saying, God, we're not everything that we uh, should be, or that we ought to be. And Lord, we need revival. Would you draw us up close to you once again, so that we uh, can experience a uh, victory and power and joy uh, that we might walk in a way that's well pleasing to you. Uh, listen Lord we need your help. We, uh, we're living in a mess. Our society is a wreck. And Lord we need some help this morning. Amen. Starts with humility. Yeah. And this morning as long as we are satisfied with where we are. Leonard Ravenhill said it this way. The reason we don't have revival is we're content to live without it. Yeah. A lot of truth in that. We're satisfied with our toys and our trinkets. Right. We're satisfied with what we've got and where we are. And it is no wonder we're not seeing the Lord bless and move. But if God would ever humble us and we'd see our, our desperate need for revival, it would spark something in our hearts and our lives and in our church this morning. Our church is not everything it should be. Our church doesn't do everything it should do. Listen, this morning, we need revival. Uh, we need revival. I need revival. And it begins with being humble and admitting that we're not where we should be. And we're not everything we should be. And we need the Lord to do something for us. That's right. So you'll find it begins with humility. But you'll find, secondly, look, look on the verse in verse 14. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves, 
Uh oh. And pray and seek my face. Amen. Can I say it this way? There has never in the history of the Christian church ever been real, genuine revival without prayer. Amen. No church from the very beginning, from the book of Acts all the way through the New Testament, all the way down to you and I, there has never been a church that experienced revival that didn't pray. Right. Re real, genuine revival is not born from singing. Real, genuine revival is not born from preaching. Real, genuine revival is born from prayer. Right. Amen. And hear me this morning. He, God gives us the second ingredient. First he said, get humble. If you ain't humble, you won't pray. Right. Because you feel like you're doing all right and ain't got nothing to pray about. Right. But when you get humble and you realize you need the Lord, right. it will motivate us to go to our prayer closet and mm -hmm. seek the God of heaven. Hear me this morning. If we're going to see a move of God, it won't be because Mike Gray comes. It right. won't be because the Roger Henson family's here. It won't be because I'm the pastor. It'll be because God's people got under a burden and began to pray. Right. And they begged and they pleaded with the Lord. And they said, Lord, we need revival. Not another meeting, not a flash in the plan, not excitement, not enthusiasm. We need a real, genuine, deep move of God to work and move in the hearts and lives of people. And they got under a burden for it. And they began to seek and beg the Lord to bless revival and ask the Lord to show up and do something in the hearts and in the lives of His people. Hear me this morning. If you're going to have revival, whether personal or whether corporate, at church wide, it begins with humility, but then we have got to pray and seek the very face of Almighty God. Right. Right. You want to have real revival? It takes humility. It takes prayer. And not that, now I lay me down to sleep, I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. Right. And get up going. Oh no, I'm talking about genuine prayer. Right. Spending time in the prayer closet. And hear me this morning. Uh, if we're going to have real revival and see God do something the next few, next several days through revival, it'll be because we pray and sought the Lord and begged Him to show up. The power of God cannot be manufactured. Right. Cannot be stirred up. It cannot be faked, right. but it can be prayed down. Amen. There ain't enough education to get the power of God in the building. Yeah. Yeah. There ain't enough good works to get God uh, right. to get God moving in the building. God response, God's power is a response to the prayer of His people. This morning we need revival. It'll begin with humility. It'll continue with prayer and seeking the very face of God. But notice number three. Verse 14, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, uh-oh, and turn from their wicked yeah. ways. Amen. That means we've got to get right. Right, amen. Can I be honest? There ain't nothing will kill a revival like sin. Right. Sin is a revival killer. Sin will harden your heart and rob you of your humility. Right. Yeah. And listen, uh, sin will keep you out of prayer closet. Yeah. And listen, the Lord gives us the steps. Humble ourselves. Realize we need revival. Then we begin to pray and seek the very face of God. As we pray, God begins to deal with us and shows us some things in our hearts and in right. our lives that need to be dealt with. And this morning, it does you no good to humble yourself and pray if you're not willing to deal with the things that God has dealt with you about. We love to roll in here Wednesday night. The choir get up and get to singing. The Spirit of God get to moving and the Lord begin to nudge you and say, that ain't right. You need to deal with that. And now if you'll respond and get in order and deal with whatever God deals with you about, then revival will continue and God can bless. But if you refuse, if you say, nah, it's, I'm not, I'm not going to go, you know what you'll do? You'll kill revival not only in your heart, but in, in our church. Yeah. Hear me. We must be willing to repent and turn from our wicked ways Amen. if we're ever going to see God do something for us. Amen. And so he gives us the third ingredient. He said, first, be humble. Second, you better pray and seek the face of God. But then he said this, and turn from your wicked ways. Yeah. 
let, here's the thing. Here, here's what I pray. Lord, is there something wicked in my heart? David, David prayed this way. Lord, search my heart, see if there be any evil way in me. Right. He said, purge me with hyssop. Clean my heart. He said, Lord, I, I can't search my own heart. So, Lord, I'm asking you to search it. And so I pray, Lord, if there be any wicked way in me, show it to me so I can confess it, forsake it, and get right with you. Lord, if there be anything between me and you, Lord, I don't want it in there. So, Lord, would you reveal it to me so I can confess it, forsake it? I don't want anything to be between us. And so this morning, if we're going to have real revival, we've got to make sure our hearts are right. Is there bitterness in your heart? Is there jealousy in your heart? Right. Is there pride in your heart? Uh, listen to me this morning. Are you out doing something you ain't supposed to be doing? Watching something you ain't supposed to watch. Living in a way that's displeasing to the Lord. Listen, are you living in rebellion? Uh, do you have right. sin in your heart? Are you watching trash on TV? Ain't no business watching. Are you listening to something you ain't no business listening to? Right. Hear me this morning. If we're going to have real, genuine revival, we have got to clean up in the sight of God. Right. Right. Listen, you know what real revival is? You're saying, look, I want God more than I want that. Uh, whatever that is. Uh, you say, look, uh, the Lord is saying you've got a choice to make. You can either have revival and have the joy and have the power and have the presence of God and you can see real tea with revival and you can get up close to me or you can have that thing you're hanging on to and so you've got a choice to make. Do you want this thing that you're hanging on to that grieves me and hinders me and prevents me from sending revival or are you willing to turn from it and embrace me and say I'd rather have Jesus than that thing. I need revival. I need revival that I'm willing to lay down whatever God deals with me about so I can have revival because I know it'll be worth everything I give up with just one touch from the master. Right. Hear me this morning. Every child of God in the building this morning, you've got to make a decision. If God deals with you about something, either you're going to hang on to that and you're not going to have revival or you're willing to turn from that and you're willing to embrace the Lord. That's when and only then will you have revival. Right. Right. So he gives us three simple things. Humble ourselves. Pray. Turn from our wicked ways. Amen. But then he goes on to give us the results of us doing those things. Let me show them to you. Let me give you these three things that I'm done. Now he gives us, notice this, he gives us our part first. God doesn't do his part first. He expects us to do our part first. Right. When we do our part, then God shows up and does his part. Now, whether we do our part or not, that's kind of it because we're human and we're flesh. Yep. But there is absolutely no doubt that God will do His part. There is no doubt in my mind, if we'll do our part, that God will do His part. Notice what He said in the Look at the rest of the verse. Look at verse 14. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then, after we have done all of our part, after we have humbled ourselves, after we have prayed, after we have turned from our wicked ways, then God's going to show up and notice what He does. Look at verse 14. Then will I hear from heaven. You see that? God said when He finds His people in such a condition as He mentions in the first part of verse 14, it gets His attention and He begins to hear and listen. I know God listens all the time. I, I, I know that. But hear me, there's something special uh, when God sees a group of people who will humble themselves, Amen. pray, seek His face, turn from their wicked ways, and are seeking revival. God perks up and pays special attention to that crowd. Right. He said, then will I hear from heaven. And so hear me this morning. You want to get God's attention? Then do the first three things He tells us to do. And if we do that, God promises He'll hear us. Our prayers will not be in vain. Our prayers will not bounce right. off the walls. Our prayer won't go in one ear and out the other, as it were. But God said, now and you've got my attention. Now I'm watching you. I see what you're doing. I see that, that you're trying. I see that you're seeking. I see that you're humble. I see that you, you have turned. I see that you're, you are fulfilling all of the things I told you to do. And now you've got my attention. I'm listening. Go ahead and ask. Go ahead and seek my face for revival. Hear me. If you, you know what it says? Pray and seek, the, uh, seek His face and turn from their wicked ways. If you pray and seek His face without turning from your wicked ways, you've got no evidence that God's even hearing you. Right. Right. It is only when you pray and turn from your wicked ways yeah. 
that God says, now I'm listening. God promised he'd hear us. If we'll humble ourselves, pray, turn from our wicked ways, God promised he'd be listening. Now, you'll find that he listens, but not only does he just hear us, notice what else he does in verse 14. Uh, and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin. Do you see that? God promised He'd forgive us and cleanse us. God promised He would restore us. God promised He would get us back where we used to be. Before we got loose. Before we got sideways with God. Back when we'd come to church in the choir and sing and tears would roll down our face. Yeah. Back when we would pray and back when we were in love with Jesus and we wouldn't, didn't want to do anything that might hinder or hurt the Savior. We wanted to walk in obedience to the will of God. Back when we read our Bibles and we prayed and, and, and our desire was to do right, we wanted to live a life that's pleasing to God. God said if we would, uh, if we would humble ourselves, uh, pray and seek His face, turn from our wicked ways, He'd hear from heaven and He'd forgive us and restore us back to where we were. Right. Yeah. Can I be honest? I, again, that's what revival is. It's getting back where we used to be. Right. Can I say, say it this way? If, if there's ever been a time in your life when you were closer to God than you are now, you're backslid. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. I'm just, I mean, that's just a fact. Yeah. If there's a time when you used to be closer to the Lord uh, than you are now, you ain't right. right. You've backslid. You need to get right with the Lord. Yeah. And listen, if you'll follow the, the, the ingredients then the recipe will turn out right. right. God said He'd forgive and cleanse us. Mm -hmm. And listen, restore us and get us back to where we once were. And scooch us up close to the Savior. I got I get tickled at Ollie. I love Oliver. Uh, I love all our kids. But Oliver during the youth choir always comes and sits right here with me. Uh, and uh, the other day, the Lord got to move and the youth choir was singing and people started getting in the altar and me and Ollie were sitting there. And so I got up to come over here and pray with my wife and he, Ollie came right here with me. And so I got here to pray and I prayed with my wife a few minutes. I got up to go back. Oliver was standing right there waiting on me. So when I come back over here and sat down, Oliver came right back over here and sat down with me. I thought that's the way I want to be with the Lord. Wherever the Lord goes, I want to go. Wherever, if the Lord slides over here, I want to slide over here with him. I just want to be close to him. I just want to be beside him. I just want to be, I, I mean, just right up close to him. And listen, there are times if we're not careful, we walk in our own will and our own wishes and we begin to peel away from the Lord. And when revival comes, God forgives us and draws us back up close to Him and puts that desire in our heart to please Him and be with Him and walk with Him. He promised He'd forgive us. He promised He'd restore us. Amen. Amen. But notice what He said lastly. He said, Then, Will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land? Amen. Can I be honest? Our land is in a mess. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Lord, have mercy on my soul. I have never, listen, I was, I was born in 1971. That means in a few months, in August, I will be 50 years old. I was raised in a very different America. Yeah. Than what you're living in. Yeah. Uh, can I be honest? I was raised in an America where men were men. Amen. And it took a whole lot more than words to hurt their feelings. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. My God, man, who would ever thought we got to a place where we're offended by maple syrup? Right. Aunt Jemima ain't the problem. <laughs> if Aunt Jemima offends you, you got bigger issues than what I can deal with before 12 years I'll be honest, you need some counseling. You don't need preaching, you need counseling, man. Listen, if, answer my, if Uncle Ben's rice bothers you, you got an issue, man. I ain't never, listen, I'm 50. You can look at me, food don't offend me. I don't care what you call it. You can call it pudding time. It don't offend me. I don't care what kind of label, what kind of box. It don't matter what you need. I eat it out of your hand. I don't care. But we live in a generation that are that is offended by the simplest, uh, most insignificant things in all of the world. Our land is in a mess. 
Sure. I'm not even going to bother getting coronavirus and all that. God, dear God, I'd be here all day. Mm -hmm. But we are in a mix. But can I say this? They're saying if you're vaccinated, you don't have to wear a mask. Mm -hmm. If you're unvaccinated, you have to keep wearing a mask. I am not the sharpest tool in the shed. Amen. But this is what I hear. Mm -hmm. The unvaccinated have to continue to wear a mask to protect those who took the shot. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right. <laughs> I thought the shot was to protect you. Right. And if I got to wear a mask to protect folks who've already got the shot, why did they take the shot? That's right. Yeah. 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 That's right. I'm just a redneck country boy. But you're telling me I gotta wear a mask to protect somebody who's already been vaccinated? Right. Right. Yeah. Amen. That probably means your vaccination don't work. Right. Amen. Yeah. That's right. See, something fishy about that. That's right. Amen. Now, I'm just saying, we're in a we're a mess. That's my point. Right. I'm not being critical of it. If you got the vaccination, that's between you and Jesus, I'll leave you alone. Right. I, I, I don't care. It'll make no difference. But my point is, our society is in a mess yeah. tonight. Right. Today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know what the cure is? It ain't getting Trump back in the White House. I'm a Trump supporter. God bless him. Yeah. I'm a Trump supporter. Yeah. If you're going to be mad at me, I'll just go ahead and give you a reason. I'm, I, I, I voted for him. Can I be honest? I voted for him again this time. Right. And if he runs tomorrow, I'll vote for him again. I, I got no problem with uh, you say he's right. Yeah, at least he loved our country. Amen. I ain't getting into all that. But my point is this. Trump, if we vote him in tomorrow, can't fix what's wrong in America. Right. That's right. That's right. The problem is not a political problem. Right. The problem is a spiritual right. problem. Right. That's right. The problem is, is, uh, is a spiritual problem. And the problem lies in the hearts of men, women, boys, and girls. The, the heart is deceitful. Right. The cure for the problem in our land is not a new president. It ain't more laws. Can I be honest? It's not even a border wall. It ain't any of those things. Those are not going to fix our problems in America. The only hope we got is the church experience revival. And when revival comes, God sweeps in a bunch of folks into the kingdom, changes their heart, which in turn changes the community. And if we change enough communities, pretty soon states begin to get changed. If we change enough states, pretty soon all of America is changed. That's right. Amen. Yeah. Mm. Yep. God promised He'd heal our land. Yeah. Amen. But this morning, in order for God to do His part, we got to do our part. Right. Right. Amen. Humble ourselves. Pray. Seek His face. Yeah. Yeah. Not His blessing. Right. Seek His face. Right. Amen. Turn from our wicked ways. Then, then, after we do those things, then I will heal from heaven, forgive their sin, and heal them. Yeah. If America has any hope, it won't be found in the White House. Right. It'll be found in the church house. Right. Amen. And this morning, I need revival. Yes. I'll be honest, I need revival. Yes. I need the sweet spirit of God to come by and just wreck me. And just let me <coughs> lay before and cry and yeah. squall and rejoice yeah. and thank Him. And That's what I need. Right. I need Amen. it. I need the Holy Ghost get all over. Is it more yeah. country preachers you say? I need the Holy Ghost get all over me at both feet. And uh, just sit down in my lap, just get all over me. That, 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 listen, I ain't got nothing in my life that what 15 minutes with the Holy Ghost couldn't straighten up. Right. 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 This morning, it'll cure your marriage. Yeah. You got marriage Sorry. trouble, nothing will fix it like the Spirit of God. Amen. Right. Nothing will fix your home like revival. Yeah. This morning, God's asking us to do our part first. And if we do, He'll respond and do His. Right. Amen. This morning, we need to go by. As Mr. Cole comes, I'm done. Father, thank you for grace and mercy and kindness and love. Thank you for compassion. Thank you, Lord, for a principle we find in the Word of God. 
Lord, you said if we would humble ourselves. Lord, this morning we admit we need revival. Lord, we admit we're not everything we should be. Lord, we're trying. And we're, we, we're trying to be faithful. But Lord, I, I'll be honest with you. I don't think there's a soul in here that can say, I'm everything I'm supposed to be. I'm right where God wants me. Including me, Lord. And so, Lord, we admit that we're not, we're not everything we should be. And Lord, we humbly as we know how, Lord, we begin to pray and seek thy face. Lord, we beg you for revival. Lord, it's the answer for our homes. It's the answer for our nation. It's the answer for our community. It's the answer for our church. Lord, we're begging you to send revival. Father, this morning, if there be any wicked way in me, reveal it to me. So I can confess it and forsake it and get right with you. Father, I don't want anything to be between us. Lord, I'd rather have Jesus than silver and gold. I'd rather have Jesus than riches untold. Father, this morning I'd rather have you than anything else. So Father, there be something in my heart, Lord, that's come between us, that's hindering you. Pray you'd reveal it to me so I can confess it, forsake it, and get right with you. Get it out of my life. Lord, I need revival. Lord, our church needs revival. These dear people need revival. Father, we're begging you to send it. Lord, you gave us this principle that if we do our part, then you do your part. And Lord, we know that you will. There's no doubt in my mind. Help us to do our part. Send revival to our church. Deal with us. Convict us. May the Spirit of God get to digging around in our hearts and help us. Whatever ain't right, Lord, I pray you point it out to us and deal with us. Draw us up close to you so we can have revival. Father, whatever you do, we'll thank you. We'll praise you. We love you. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Your hearts and minds clear. Please, please pray. Please. Can I be honest the way things are prophetically? This might be our last revival for Jesus God. That's how close we are to the coming of the Lord. And this morning, this may be our last revival. So please, pray and do what the text says and watch God do what God promised He'll do. All right. As we stand. All right. You're at liberty to go in the Spirit of the Lord. We'll see you tonight, 6 o'clock.